So if you're a YouTube content creator like myself, then you probably know the importance of having YouTube chapter links in all your videos, especially the long videos where it can be a little bit more boring. You really want to engage with your audience to help them find the content that they truly need so that you don't waste their time. So it's really important and this will ultimately help your bottom line driving up view count, view duration, retention, and ultimately ad revenue. So I actually created a Premiere Pro plugin that you can use and it's totally free to help you seamlessly export timeline markers from your timeline directly into YouTube's chapter link. It's going to be really, really easy and I'm very excited to show you. So let's get right into the tutorial. So first, let's install the plugin. Now, the instructions you're about to see are gonna be for Windows, but this plugin should work for Mac OS. You're just gonna to have to copy the plugin to a slightly different folder path. Now, the first thing you wanna do is visit link in the description of this video, and it'll lead you to the tutorial, the written tutorial of this, in case you don't wanna follow along the video, and you can just download the plugin from the first step. So I'll click this link right here, and you can just download this plugin into your desktop. It doesn't matter because we're gonna be extracting the, the file. So here is the plugin, I've downloaded it. I'm gonna right click and extract it to a particular folder. And there should be a named folder because that's the folder that you're gonna be copying into the plugins folder for Adobe Premiere. So I just extracted the folder as a zip file onto my desktop as well. I'm gonna be copying it into a different folder very shortly. Now, if you don't have this particular kind of icon, don't worry. Windows and Mac OS by default have support for extracting a zip file. So if you double click the folder, you can look inside the contents of this extension, nothing but my code in there. There's also a how to install plugin text file. If you get lost, you can, you can use that, but the, the instructions on the website that I provided or in this video is probably gonna be better. So as you can see in the step three of my instructions, you're gonna, create, you're gonna copy that newly created folder that I did, had just shown into a folder called CEP extensions. And this folder is in multiple places, especially in Windows environment, so it's a little bit confusing, but I believe you can use any of the three examples down below as I highlighted over here. So let's say, for example, you wanna copy it into your C program files directory, then you can just use this one. You could also use this one. You have to replace the user with your own user that is your admin user on Windows. Uh, it's it's kind of confusing as to why there's so many different extension folders. I'm sure one of them is generic for like all Adobe extensions, and then there's one specific to Adobe Premiere. So I'll just go safe and I'll just plug it into here. So open up Windows Explorer, and you can see that there are some extensions already here. And more importantly, you can see that I have the Time Bolt extension, and this is actually the the, the company that sponsored this video. I'm gonna talk more about TimeBolt later in this video, so I definitely recommend staying to the end. But basically, TimeBolt is a way to actually cut out all the A-roll dead silence. So as you're talking to the camera, if you stop talking, it'll cut that out automatically. So it makes editing a lot faster. And in fact, I'm actually using it for this video to speed my whole development process of creating videos a lot to make it a lot faster. So definitely recommend checking it out. I'll leave the links in the description for it. So anyways, we'll copy our extension. So we can just copy or we can cut or paste it. And that's it. Once it's in the extensions folder, you can open up Adobe Premiere and then we can find the extension. So to find the extension, you're gonna click Window, Extensions, and then here you can find it, J Syntax Workflows. I'll click that. And then here you can see a dialog that shows some, in, some buttons. This opens up the J Syntax Workflows extension. So I'm gonna talk about the bottom section over here in a separate video. It's a really helpful workflow technique that I've been using a lot to speed up my uh, editing process, but I'm gonna save it for a separate video. All you really care about is the button up here, copy markers to clipboard. So how exactly does that work? Well, anything that you put as a marker on your timeline, let's say I put it on a, right here, and you click copy, it's gonna appear with that, within a timeline marker so that you can copy it to your YouTube videos. So let, I'm gonna explain how that works. So let's assume that you've cut up all your A-roll, maybe using the time bold extension to make it a lot faster. And let's say you layered all the B-roll on your clips and you're ready to go. You have kind of have your video moments ready to go and you wanna publish it. So the first thing you wanna do is start adding uh, markers on your timeline and specifically on the timeline, not necessarily on the actual video clips. I'm gonna explain what that means in a second. So the first thing you wanna do is set the first marker and it has to start at zero, zero, zero. If it doesn't, then the YouTube algorithm isn't gonna pick up your chapter links as um, the text of your chapter links as a chapter link. So you better start it with zero, zero, zero. So let's move the cursor to the beginning. And I'm gonna use my shortcut, which I binded to add markers which makes it a lot faster to do. And you, you definitely want to do that because the alternative is to right click, add marker, and then you get to double click this tiny little icon 
so that you can type in like, this is my chapter link and hit okay. So that was a very gruesome uh, process. You don't want to make it that slow. So instead, I'm gonna, let me undo that. You want to go into your keyboard shortcuts. And in my case, I binded it to the, to my left hand on my left side of my keyboard to control Q. So control Q and you can see add marker is Q. Now there's a strategy to, to actually assigning very common key bindings to your, to your left hand. Because you have your, your right hand typically on the mouse, you really want to keep everything on the kind of left side of the keyboard. So it's very ergonomic and very easy to access with your left hand. So that's just one pro tip. Definitely use key bindings when you're doing this kind of work. So let's go. I'm going to hit control Q twice. Uh, the first is to add the marker to the timeline. And then the second is to actually put a name for that marker. And I also want to make sure that you don't have any of these clips selected. Cause if you select the clip, what's, what's going to happen is that the marker is actually going to go onto the clip and you don't want that. You want it to be on the actual timeline. And I noticed that if you have, um, this, this feature called selection follows playhead, if you have that enabled, it kind of makes it difficult because as you scroll, you can see that it selects. And if I hit Q, it's going to add it. So I definitely recommend disabling that feature. So just go to sequence section follows playhead just make sure it's unchecked generally that's a nice feature to have but not when you're mark when you're actually marking your uh, video so let's go to the beginning i'm gonna hit control q twice and i'm gonna say intro to wi-fi dead spot problem and then what you can actually see is i've labeled segments of my video with different colors and these are just labels and of course i use key bindings to do that because i don't recommend like right clicking this going to, to label and then giving it a special color. Um, so I, I, I basically will select a section and that will help me later as I'm editing my A-roll to understand, okay, well, this is a change in subject, so I should check. Let me see what I'm saying so I've here. I'm running the Deco XE75. Not only that, it So in this section, I talk about Wi-Fi 6E, so I'm just gonna hit Wi-Fi 6E. And then I know that this whole section is about what I've just talked about. So I, I don't need to, I don't need to read it. I can just use my arrow keys to go to the next section. Now so I do want to quickly mention that the speed of the flip. So here, maybe I talk about Wi-Fi backhaul and I just repeat the process. And I like using my up down keys just to seek through the clip really quickly. Uh, what's really nice is that everything is snapped. So my, if I move my cursor, it's going to snap to the specific um, timeline location. So the exact second and trust me having to do this in, let's say, Let's say you wanted to annotate your markers uh, in this video in YouTube and you want to, let's say, so like, okay, okay, you start with like zero, zero intro, and then maybe you watch your video and you're like, oh, I talked about this. Okay. Let me, let me, let me go back. Okay. I talked at zero, three, two. Okay. Let me go to zero, three, two. And I, it's like some other subject. And that's a very cumbersome process. Like having to seek through a timeline and then understand what you're talking about. And you don't have all the snap features and labeling. It just makes the whole process of labeling, especially long videos to be very gruesome and, and very difficult. So I, I definitely don't recommend it. I recommend using this, this plugin. Now I just want to quickly talk about labels um, because as you can see, uh, I have a bunch of different labels for every clips that makes it very easy to mark. Well, let's say you start off with um, your A roll here, right? This is just me talking in my head, my A roll head. And I've used uh, time bolt to shrink down this, all these clips into, uh, so that, so that there's no dead silence. So that's been very helpful, but you know, let's say I want to review this footage and I know that after this part, I start talking about a different subject. I'm going to mark everything to the right of my clip that I've just talked about with a label. So in my case, alt two just gives it a whole color and you might see like, oh, well, why is everything to the right? Like, why is everything to the right a different color? Well, it doesn't matter as you progress. Oh, new subject detected here. Okay. Let me, let me select and then let me apply a different color and then so forth. Like, oh, maybe I talked about different subject here. Okay. Let me, let me apply the different color there. So, uh, yeah, like that. And, and you repeat this and eventually you get something like this, where all the segments are separated, separated out by different colors or labels. It just makes the whole process of just being able to annotate your video footage a lot easier and faster. Okay. So let's say you get to the end point. Um, let's say you've completely annotated everything. Everything has like a title. So what you want to do is go to the plugin 
And that's a little bit of annoying uh, kind of thing to have to do to actually have to go into the selected over here. So what I've done instead is created a workspace. And this workspace is all about syncing footage, uh, some other topic, and workflows, uh, to basically to open up that ex uh, extension plugin. So let's say I close this thing here, and let's say I'm in like this editing, whatever, this, this workspace. If I click this, it basically opens um, the extension for me and that's because I've saved it. So what you can do is you can create a new workspace and then go here, save as new workspace. You can give it a, like a random name. Now, if you do want it to be within one of these keyboard shortcuts, you have to label it in such a way that it appears at the top. And in order to do that, you can give it a number. So in my case, let's say I want to edit my workspace and let's say I want this new one to be at the top. So I'll just give it six dash, click okay. So I'll go back. To so now you can see that it's moved up in the list of workspaces that are available. So now I can just use my keyboard shortcut, Alt-Shift-6 to get to this particular type of workspace. In my case, it's Alt-Shift-3. I've, I've already created to that. So it just makes the whole process of getting to the actual plugin a lot easier. So the final step is to click this magical button right here. So I click it and then boom, this is my all my annotated notes. Um, it, you'll notice that it's already copied to your clipboard. So you can see that in my clipboard, it's already here, but you can just always cop select this and copy paste it. And then we'll go into our video and we'll just simply paste it in there. And now you have all the chapter links. And this is what the final product looks like. You can see um, everything broken down into different topics. So let's say router versus access point mode. mode. Uh, each node is a powerful standalone router. So if people are interested, your audience has the option to go to specific, uh, jump to specific segments of your video, different subjects, and this saves them a lot of time. And it's definitely a necessary thing. So I think with this new plugin that I've created, there's no more excuses to not annotate your video, to provide chapter links for your audience. I think it's very essential and it's really gonna help drive engagement, retain your views, and ultimately deliver on more ad revenue. So anyways, that's all I have to say about this video. Definitely use key binding shortcuts to add markers. Use labels to categorize or to organize your footage so that you know where to go. Use the inbuilt timeline snap feature so that you can quickly get to the exact pinpoint location of where your, your topic changes. And then use my extension or use my, my plugin to copy all your timeline markers into your YouTube video so that your audience are a lot more happier. That's all I have to say. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. I really would like to you know, help anyone that's stuck with it if they have problems installing it. I'm here to help, so please let me know. I will be there monitoring the comments like a Hawkeye. The last thing I wanna say is that our sponsor is next coming up and it's all about Timebolt. So definitely check it out if you wanna support this project and have it grow further. Check out the affiliate links at the bottom and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. We can probably agree that video editing is a very fun and creative process, but let's face it, there are some tasks that are just so menial, boring, and labor intensive that we wish we could just outsource it or just simply not do at all. And a lot of that has to deal with cutting out dead air or silences in your A-roll talking head. Now, thankfully, Timebolt, which is a really cool piece of software that has recently come out, has made it really easy to cut out dead air in your footage. And this makes the whole process of creating video, creating content a lot more fun and more manageable, especially for one person. I've estimated the amount of hours I've saved using this piece of software. And based on that, it has definitely paid for itself more than 10 times. So I definitely think it's worth it, especially for the lifetime membership. I will leave a link in the description. If you do use my coupon code, it definitely does help this channel. Thanks for your support and I will see you in the next video.